When you ask a large bunch of people what they want to have happen to their body once they die, a large bunch of them will say that they want their body donated to science, which is very noble. But then you ask them, have you registered? Like, have you registered at each different university? Have you read the terms and conditions? Because there's like a lot. And if they don't take you, which is highly likely, what is your plan B? Um, well, uh, mm, mm, I hadn't really thought of that. And that's the problem. It's not as straightforward as you think. So let's talk about it. Before we begin, we post death and dying related videos every Friday. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's talk donating your body to science. Unlike burial or cremation, if you want your body donated to science, you can't just tell your family and leave it up to them once you die. You have to put things in place long before you're dead. You have to be proactive. Now I'll put all the info from this video in the description, but before we get to the how, let's answer some general questions, remembering this is in Australia. The rest of the world will get to you later in the video. What does donating your body to science mean? Donating your body to science here in Australia means donating your full body to a licensed institute to be used for anatomical teaching, medical and scientific research and specialist training. In Australia, these institutes are always attached to a university and licensed by the health department. Bodies can be retained for between six months and five years, depending on how the institute has chosen to use that particular body. Where do I register? It's important to note that there is no overarching database that you can sign up to. You must sign up to each individual university's program that you may wish to donate your body to. These are the universities licensed to have these programs. So yeah, if you're in New South Wales, you have plenty of choice. For the rest of us, we're pretty damn limited. And if you live in the Northern Territory, you are shit out of luck, no options for you. Now, each of these unis programs have slightly different terms and conditions, although they are very similar. But since this kind of thing is so heavily regulated here, let's look at some of the general T's and C's of it. Terms and conditions. First up, you need to have pre-registered. It is very, very rare that a next of kin can donate. And this would only be possible if there was proof that the deceased had wanted it, but they just hadn't registered yet. And that is a very difficult one to prove. Once you register, the program will give you information as to what needs to be done upon your death. But you need to tell your family and doctor that you have registered for this because getting you to the facility is very time sensitive. Additionally, some programs will allow you to be an organ donor before your body is donated, some won't. Some will be okay if you have an autopsy, some won't. Now remember, it is illegal in Australia to profit off a body, so universities do not charge for taking the body. However, Australia is a very large place and transporting a body to these facilities takes time and money. So for instance, in WA, if you're within 100 kilometers of UWA, the uni will pay the cost of the transfer. However, if you are further than that, you will need to organize and pay a funeral director to transport the body to the facility. And keep in mind, your home may be within 100 kilometers of a facility, but if you're on holidays and have a heart attack and are 200 kilometers away, that changes your plans. It is very important to know that just because you register to donate your body doesn't mean they have to accept it. Each facility has its own rules, but common reasons a body may not be accepted is if the body has had an autopsy, has had recent surgery, has had organs removed for donation, has a possible contagious disease, has been significantly altered by certain medical conditions or procedures, have some other medical condition, for example, severe vascular disease or HIV, has been assessed as being obese or emaciated, been deceased for more than five days, showing extreme signs of decomposition, has been assessed to be unsuitable for embalming, or the facility is full and has no room to currently accept new donations. So that is the reality of this. If you die in a horrible car crash and are severely burned, they probably won't take you. If you die overseas, they probably won't take you. If your death is suspicious, they probably won't take you. The research and training these facilities do require the average body, not the outliers. And if you've ever done any scientific research, you will understand why this is the case. On the flip side, some research facilities are looking for the outliers. This is why it is so important to do your research as to where you want to donate your body. But the point is, you need to have a plan B in case your body isn't accepted. Don't put all your bones into one basket. After the science. 
So once med students have learnt all they can from the body and the university has decided that no more value can come from it, they will look at your registration form to find out what to do next. When you register, you need to write down your next of kin and your executor. You must also put down whether you want your cremated remains returned to the next of kin or you would like them disposed of. Most unis here in Australia have a small garden plot at the local cemetery where you'll be interred. If you choose this, most will also ask you whether you want your name on a memorial plaque or not as well. If you are enjoying this video, please show us some love and click the like and subscribe buttons. And if you really like it, perhaps share it with others. It really does make a difference in helping this channel grow and it would be really very much appreciated. Now let's look at some other countries. Germany. Much like in Australia, body donation in Germany is highly regulated. You must have registered to be a body donor before your death and your next of kin cannot deny this from happening. This is because in Germany, the right to autonomy extends beyond death, as a result of which the instructions given by the deceased during their lifetime must be respected when dealing with their body. However, the facility does not have to accept the body if it doesn't meet certain criteria, similar to that here in Australia. However, in Germany, most facilities will charge a fee, not to donate, but to cover the cost of the body disposal and funeral afterwards. India. And now it gets a bit different. India has a huge network of body donation programs around the country. Most facilities do prefer that you have pre-registered, but many will take bodies donated by the next of kin. Additionally, under the Autonomy Act of 1948, bodies can be claimed for medical and research purposes if no one has claimed one's body within 48 hour time frame, which is a tad questionable. There is also the probability of unethical facilities selling skeletons and body parts as mentioned in our modern day corpse theft video. Speaking of that video, USA. Oh boy, where do we start with this one? We will look at this one a bit more in depth than the others because I know we have a lot of US viewers who may be interested, but buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Now it is estimated that around 20,000 people donate their body to science every year in the US for the purpose of medical research and education. But unlike organ donation, these body parts can be bought and sold for profit, a market with very few federal regulations, hence the existence of body brokers. The Uniform Anatomical Gift Act, a statute adopted by 47 states, is one of the very few regulations governing the non-transplant tissue industry. It outlines the standards for body donation and most significantly, it requires that donors or their loved ones must provide informed consent before donation takes place. These consent agreements between donor and tissue banks typically stipulate that the body will be used for research and education. But what that means in practice can vary wildly. Now, I know some people will cry, I'm dead, I don't care if my body is used for military training or it's a crash test dummy. But the problem is that isn't what's being said. It is strongly being implied by body brokers that a body will be used for dissection by medical students. And because the bodies can be bought and sold, they can end up anywhere for any purpose. Now, since I have a plan to go visit a bunch of US medical schools next year, I thought I would look into how some of the top medical schools over there address this issue of body donation in their programs. Although after a bit of research, I may not bring up what I found. First up, Harvard Medical School, which we all know by now has some problems in this area. Now they state on their website, private donation is the only source of Harvard Medical School's anatomical gifts, meaning they only use direct donation. They don't buy from body brokers. And that phrase just gives me the ick. But this is good. That's what you want. You want direct donation. Unfortunately though, their credibility took a massive hit last year. And I quote from their website, Harvard University initiated an independent review of our anatomical gift program after we learnt from the US Attorney's Office about allegations of criminal activity within the program, which led to the indictment and arrest of Cedric Lodge, a former staff member at the Harvard Medical School morgue on June 14, 2023. Lodges allege criminal acts which involve the unlawful interstate transport of stolen human remains are morally reprehensible and inconsistent with the standards that Harvard University, Harvard Medical School, our anatomical donors and their loved ones expect and deserve. But they weren't alone in this. 
University of Michigan, UCLA, University of Arkansas, and so many more have had similar issues in the past. And unfortunately, the likelihood of a similar scandal in the future is very high. Because at the moment, it's very profitable to sell bodies on in the USA, and there's no laws against it. And individuals will always be looking for a way to make easy money. Generally speaking though, in the USA, it is much safer to donate your body directly to a university program. And there are way too many for me to put up on screen, so there is a link in the description. Do not donate your body to a body broker or middleman, no matter what your funeral director says. The body can end up anywhere for any purpose guaranteed. Remember that video? And here's another good example. David Saunders, 98, died of COVID a few years ago. His elderly wife said that after her husband died, she tried to donate his body to the Louisiana State University's medical school as he had wanted. But she said the school declined the body because he had died of an infectious disease, which is fair. She then turned to a Baton Rouge funeral home, which referred her to MedEd Labs in Nevada, an organization that says it provides cadavers to military, government, commercial, and nonprofit organizations. Mrs. Saunders said, at no time did they tell me they were going to resell his body. Under no circumstances would I have had my husband's body on display. But that's what happened. They sold his body and it was used during a live autopsy at an Oregon hotel where audience members paid $500 each to watch. Med Ed Labs denied any wrongdoing, saying that Mrs. Saunders had given her consent for the body to be donated, which is true but they weren't very transparent about it. 500 a seat for people to watch? This is not science, this is commercialism, Mrs. Saunders said. And yeah, I really can't argue with that. <laughs> Donating your body to science is a great thing to do and medical schools need real bodies to train their medical students. It is in our best interest for them to have access to them, but it has to be regulated. Luckily for us here in Australia, it is, and you are very unlikely to have any problem once your body has been accepted, as the whole thing is very tightly regulated and monitored. So if you have been thinking about donating, please don't wait, go sign up as soon as possible. And if you need someone to chat about this decision with, you can always book an online consult with us via our website. And with that, go talk death.